has been said that I'm pretty slack when it comes to learning to use new technology. Fortunately for me, I get to fish with mates like Tim Morgan, who spend their time not just showing me the latest and greatest fishing techniques that they've been learning, but also how to get the best out of using the equipment on your boat. When Tim asked me if I wanted to go out for a day with him and target some deep estuary fish using soft plastic techniques, I thought, why not? a really nice wash zone that drops down in about 30 or 40 foot of water. By fishing deep soft plastics effectively in that zone, you can show That's a, brim. a plastic to a lot of fish. Nice brim. Oh, he's all right. It takes a little bit of getting the hang of fishing plastics in really deep water. Just about knowing what the line's doing and when you're actually down and amongst it. And the key part is getting down to the bottom. If you can get down amongst it and just hop that plastic, fish are very inclined to feed down there because they're a long way from the light. They're not that cautious of being eaten by something else. They'll quite happily eat something that comes past. Yeah, mate, nice fish. Starting to get the blue lips, sign of a, a bigger fish. He's sitting down on that 30, 40 foot mark, chomping away. He was happily chomping away when a little two inch gulp plastic came cruising past. Just to note, that was on a 1 12th ounce jigger, which is reasonably light for that depth of water, but what I really wanted to do was get it down there nice and gently. Didn't want to bounce away too hard, and I think by getting it down softly, this fish was happy to suck it in because it did look like a natural piece of the, the diet. I don't think this is a brim, I think it's a good dewy. <laughs> dewy? Yeah. There's the head shake. <laughs> You're probably going to want me to come and net it for you too, aren't you? I'll come up. But the key to uh, when, when you are fishing and do catch a good fish like this, Nige, is just to take it easy, eh? Like the temptation's there to do up the drag, but still you've only got, like I've only got a six pound leader on here. So you've got to, you know, just take it easy. Another good lesson there too is that when you are fishing light, you do get a lot more of those bites. Yeah, mate, they've got doesn't mean, you, doesn't mean that you're going to get done over by a lot of those fish, you still can tame them just by being patient and using a lot of rod work. Well done, mate. Beautiful. You can see that little atomic prong right in the top of his mouth there, so. Uh, beautiful little jewfish, and great fun on this light line. So you've got to remember the legal size for Jew in Queensland now is 75 centimetres, so this one wouldn't even be legal, but such great fun on light line. We'll let him go and hopefully get him when he gets a bit bigger. Oh, there he goes. I'm out fishing with my good mate Tim Morgan this morning. We're out to look at some of the toys that you find in the Hummingbird and Minn Kota range. This man knows them about as, as well as anybody. We're out here to chase a few fish, but we're going to use the toys to make our life a bit easier. That's right, Nigel. And I believe your sounder and electric motor are probably two of the most important things as a lure fisherman I can have on my boat. Especially the sounder, you know, the ocean, rivers, dams, lakes, they're all big expanses of water. They're all pretty flat most of the time on the surface. So basically the main thing the sound is going to show me, it's my eyes under the water. It's going to show where my drop-offs are, where the rocky bottoms are, where the sandy bottoms are, where the bait fish is, where the predatory fish are. And basically once I find those spots, I can mark them on my GPS, get back to them every time, and in the end catch a lot more fish. So the, basically with your sounders, all entry level sounders on the market are basically a single beam. So with the Hummingbird range here, we're in about 60 foot of water. That 20 degree beam shooting down is going to cover about 20 foot of bottom in 60 foot of water, so about a third your depth. When, when people are buying a sander, I try and talk them up to a dual beam sander. The major reason for that with the Hummingbird units, the dual beam, you've got a 20 and a 60 degree beam. So in that 60 foot of water, you've got your 20 degree beam giving you that really good bottom definition. It's a smaller cone, but you've got that wider 60 degree beam covering more area, finding fish. So in 60 foot of water, basically giving you 60 foot of coverage. What Hummingbird has really excelled at over the last few years is going even wider again. And that's when we step into our side imaging and down imaging technology. With the side imaging technology, in up to 150 foot of water, you can cover up to 240 foot each side of the boat. So in this 60 foot of water, we can realistically cover about 480 foot. So, so it's, not, it's not just my eyes under the water, it's getting better than my eyes under the water. <laughs> oh, it's getting a lot better because you look like you need glasses, mate. <laughs> I don't think you can see 480 foot. But, 
you know, it, uh, by covering that much more ground and with that side imaging, the reason it's limited to only 45 metres or 150 foot depth capacity is it gives you a picture-like view of the bottom. So they're operating really high frequency beams, 455 and 800 kilohertz. And basically, it's like draining all the water out, looking down at the bottom, holding a flashlight at the boat, shining it out, and you know, you, you'll see shadows and stuff on the side imaging. Basically, the bigger the shadow, the longer the, or the higher off the bottom that object is. So over here we're going over the pipeline at the moment. You can see the pipeline and a few fish hanging off the side. But if we knock that into the, the side imaging view, you can clearly see the pipeline going either side. With our normal sonar, you know, you could be confused. You might even think that's bait. But with the down imaging, you can clearly see the pipeline and a fish holding off the top of it. So with, with that, you know, with that huge coverage, if, if we didn't go right over it, we wouldn't have seen it on the normal sonar. Yeah. But with that huge coverage, it allows you to, you know, if there's a rock bar over there, if there's a fallen tree over there, find it, no worries at all. Also with the side imaging, you can actually, anything you see on that side imaging screen, you can actually mark as a GPS point. So if you, at the moment here, we're in 40 foot of water, shooting 80 foot each side of the boat, because you can adjust your range, so 160 foot of bottom. And basically, you know, if we see a, a rock pile that might be 60 foot out to the right of the boat, we can pause the screen, move the cursor arrow over, mark that waypoint. It'll come up on our GPS screen, move the boat over there and Bob's Done. uncle. Beautiful. <laughs> so, you know, sounders have come so far in the last, uh, you know, Hummingbird have had this out for five years now. They've come so far, I, I hate to guess what they're going to be like in another five years time. Wonderful toys, 3D TV, eat your heart out. This is alright. <laughs> nice picture too, some nice fish there. Hey look, there's a few fish coming up on the screen there now, eh? You want to give it a crack? Oh, it's nearly time for us to start fishing, I reckon. <laughs> it's told us, told us where they are, <laughs> what depth they are, exactly how far off the boat they are. All I can do is put a lure in front of them now. I'm backing us in. It's alright. But it's not only finding the fish on the sand and nige, it's uh... Oh, there ah. go. <laughs> it's getting your lure down to them, so you know, using a little bit heavier jig heads. But counting that lure down so it's it's down, you know, those yeah. fish were in 60 foot of water, we're down 30 foot. Oh, <laughs> getting the lure down in front of them and bang, away you go. Like this. <laughs> <laughs> Bit like that. <laughs> Angry fish. A lot of people think, oh, you know, isn't it cheating having your sounder? Well, no, all it's helping you do is find them. But if you've got to use that information which is coming out of that little black box, it's, well, you know, where the, where the fish sitting in that water column, what size bait do I think they're eating? And then working out how, how do I get a lure in front of them and fish it the right way. Get it right. A results like this. <laughs> Targeting these fish at the moment in 30 to 40 foot of water, just finding out where they're sitting in the water column and then adapting a, a jig head size that gives us the right weight to fish the soft plastic down to them. We're using a mixture of three and four inch soft plastics and imitate what they're feeding at the moment and as soon as you get it in front of them, look out. When you're fighting fish on light gear that outclass the line, the line weights a little bit, really is your rod, it's the best shock absorber you've got. So use it to its maximum potential. I, I like a lot of 90 degree to the direction of the fish are going because it maximises that shock absorption. And if you ever do a test, sit in your driveway one day and put on a light line class and try and break it through a bent rod. It's incredibly hard to do, it's a, it's a powerful lesson. The other option, you'll hear that whining noise in the background, that's my drag working. What I've done is I've softened it up to compensate for any sudden lunges that fish make. So through a bent, a bent rod like that and a light drag setting, there's not a whole lot this fish can do unless he runs me right to bottom and finds some reef. Another bar room brawler. <laughs> There you go, gives you an idea what they're eating. Little three inch soft plastic, little minnow style, looks like a bait fish. Attach that to quarter ounce jig head, the current's pushing down. You want, we want to get down to the depth these guys are. They have to drop it down and whip it around and make it look injured. These guys will do the rest. Oh, hello. <laughs> Away we go. They've got a bit of weight to them in the yeah. net, haven't they? It's a chunk. It's a chunk. <laughs> bit like deja vu now, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so again, just a little, uh, I just cut down a little three and three quarter inch atomic jerk shad. Just a white bait fish colour, because that's what these fish are eating, is that bait fish. And we're casting right in next to that 
white water there, letting it sink down and ripping it out. So I don't know about you, I want to throw this back in and go back up there, eh? Yeah, <laughs> so we'll get him back in the water and go catch his mate. Away he goes. There's another really important little tool at work at the moment while we're fishing here, and that's the iPilot electric stuck on the bow of this boat. Having used our sounder, we're fishing deep water, but there's a long stretch of deep water here. And what we did to start with was cruise around until we found where the bait and some nice arches were holding, and then we focused our efforts in that exact area. To make sure we stayed there, Tim popped the Minn Kota iPilot in and said, stay here. It's got this fantastic little GPS locking system, which means, which makes it say, boat, you're gonna stay in this spot, and it keeps correcting us to stay in that position. Or we, it's a case of then of us trying to work out the fish and put lures in amongst them, helping us hook them. <laughs> Not maybe doing much for the angler skill of getting them back to the boat, but hey, with tools like that on sitting on your boat, how can you go wrong? When lure fishing, bait fishing or trolling, a Minn Kota electric bow mount motor is almost a must. It'll help you catch a lot more fish and have a lot more control over your boat, even in rough conditions like today. Minn Kota have taken the electric motor the next step. They've incorporated GPS with it. So this electric motor here has actually got a 50 channel GPS receiver incorporated in the head and that'll give us some unbelievable functions which I'll run through with you now. With the iPilot motor, they're actually retrofitable to any motors from 2007 onwards, as well as we've got motors that come standard with the iPilot function. With the iPilot, you get a handheld remote control like this. It'll give you the ability to turn the motor right, turn the motor left, increase speed, decrease speed, turn the motor on, turn the motor off, and also go to a high speed bypass. So if you drift it up on a rock wall, need to get away from it really quickly, hit that high speed bypass, takes you straight to 100%, hit it again, it'll take you back to the speed you're going. But the really exciting things with this new iPilot is some of the other functions it gives you, like anchor lock. Anchor lock or spot lock is like an electronic anchor without having to drop one over the side. Basically, you set that spot lock button, you've got the choice of A, B or C, so three spot lock locations. The motor actually puts a GPS coordinate right where you hit that spot and it'll hold you on there. So it'll adjust to you know, for wind, current, everything like that, and it'll hold you on that spot so your hands are free to go wherever you want to go and fish. So you can have up to three spots saved in there. It'll also give you a function called record a track. And what the record a track function will do is you can save up to three tracks three kilometres along. So if you're doing a troll run, say in an estuary around a river, you can save a three kilometre track in there, troll back along that run. Also, where I found it really useful is, say, dam fishing at night time. Up at Awonga Dam, love chasing the barra up there. Some of the best night surface luring I had up there, you can't see your hand in front of your face. So what I do is, before it gets dark, I save a three kilometre track in. I'll save that track in, and then at night time, I'll come back along that track. And I know all night, when I'm going along that track, I'm only a cast off the bank. And if I hook up to a good fish, I can override that track, take myself out to deeper water, fight it, then I can recall that track again. It'll take me to the closest waypoint on that track and keep going along it. So fishing at night time definitely got a whole lot easier. Another function we've got on it is autopilot. And basically what the autopilot function will do is if we're fishing along a rock wall like this and want to go straight along it, we can actually put the autopilot on. It'll put a waypoint 400 yards out ahead of us and then keep us heading straight towards that waypoint, taking wind, tide, current and everything into account. It's even got cruise control, so if you know your ideal speed for trolling for say bass or barra or flathead, just dial that in and the iPilot unit will adjust for wind, tide and current to keep you going at that speed over ground. You've even got the option of a foot control here, so you know if you've got someone else in the boat, you hook a good fish, they can steer you away. Fishing deep plastics, hopping them down a ledge and putting them down to fish that we can see on the sounder. I'm not entirely convinced this is a brim now, but yeah, it's a bit of a mixed bag well out here. Truly, well, it truly ate it. I don't think it's a brim. It might be flatted ish. He didn't take off like a uh, big oh, brim. No, He's a jewy. <laughs> yeah, nice. It's a little jewy. There you go. Fishing a 112 ounce soft plastic. 
down into some deeper water. Same technique we've been using, just drifting, drifting over a patch of ground and making sure our plastics are down there. As soon as they hit the bottom, we hop them up and then drop them back down to the bottom. There's plenty of fish that live down there, but are happy to grab a piece of food as it drifts past. Lovely. How good's that? You can't, you can't talk up enough the power of finding your fish first. It's just the, the basic standard step one of the fishing equation. Good tools to help you find them. And it's up to you to work out how do I stay in spot and get the lure down to them. And how good's that out? It came on. The other benefit of an, a good electric on the front of your boat is that if you do hook up good fish on light line, it gives you the benefit to chase them. Very powerful thing to do when a fish is going to outrun the amount of line you've got on a reel and it lets you fish lighter, lets you get often a lot more bites because you are fishing lighter. And you can then reduce that stress of thinking, oh, I'm stuck in one spot here and this fish is going to do me. You simply pop your electric into gear and chase it. Another nice thing in crowded waterways, and you see a lot of it, is where someone gets a fish and it takes a lot of line, other boats can often drive across that line and end battles quicker than you had planned. Whereas with the electric, you can often stay close to that fish, keep it under the boat, which alleviates the problem of other boats coming and crossing lines and stuff like that. There's a lot of boats driving around our estuaries these days with electrics on the front, and for very good reason. They're great tools to have on board. Light line sports fishing is so much fun. The practice of throwing lures around and sitting in that hunt mode, trying to find fish and then work out how to catch them. And then when you do hook them, having fun like this. And I'm not fighting any of this gear. It's the lightest tackle around. All the weight is at that battling end with the tail down at the other end of this line, which means you get to enjoy it. It's, for me, it's almost like the reason I started fly fishing as a kid because it was, it was weightless and I got to enjoy fighting a fish and not heavy gear. And with some of the, the boats and the tools we've got on board these days, even from the shore, uh, just by using your head, you can battle these fish and win. Makes for lots of fun and some satisfying captures. Feisty little estuarine GT. One of the angry members of the Trevally family. The great fun on lures, they, they love a range of lures. It's all about finding them and putting lures in front of them. Lovely fish. Get that lure out of him. Get him back in the water. I always learn something when I'm fishing with Tim. Whether it's a new lure type, retrieve, or something you really shouldn't say to your wife when she's cranky. Today was a whole lot about understanding more what some of the equipment on your boat can do. As much as I often shirk at learning about new technology, I really can't deny that the lessons add huge value to my fishing time on the water.